Dear student, the student who can't sit still, the student who feels pens prickling in their hands or pens prickling in their feet, the student who feels like there are ants literally crawling down the back of their legs and into their seat, dear student, this video is just for you. Your school year is getting ready to start and it's around this time that you get in trouble for the very first time because you cannot sit still. You get in trouble for tapping a pencil, you get in trouble for tapping your feet, you get in trouble for wiggling back and forth, you get in trouble for doing this. You get in trouble for like throwing things or rolling your pencil or clicking your pencil or clicking your pen or just doing a lot of things that just involve moving because you can't sit still like I can't sit still right now and you're just thinking what am I going to do? Today I'm here to give you some tips of what to do in a classroom when you can't sit still so that you don't get in trouble by your teacher. So let's start with your hands. So let's say you're like me and you're a person who really needs to have pressure in your hands. You have that feeling like you just need to clench something really hard. So let's go into first what we're going to do. Some things that I use when I need a lot of pressure in my hand are things like a big eraser, a stress ball, or even a really smooth rock. With a stress ball, you have to be really careful because you don't want to like get it out and throw it around and make a scene with it. But you can keep that in your desk and you hold it in your hand and squeeze really hard for like five to eight seconds and then let it loose and squeeze again for five to eight seconds and it relieves a lot of that built up tension in your hands where you need to squeeze something and need to get rid of that energy. You can do the same thing with an eraser. You just hold it in your hand and you can squeeze it and that's even less of a distraction because you can keep that on your desk and you just grab it and hold it and squeeze it and nobody will see anything and it gets rid of it. The key is to have something that you can either like manipulate a little bit and make it smaller or like have some pressure on it or have something that's really hard. Something that isn't super super easy to squeeze will help you so get rid of some of that built up energy in your hands. Let's say you don't really have that feeling of needing to get rid of the pressure in your hands but you just need to move your hand. Well one thing you could do is take no notes when the teacher is talking because that's probably what you should be doing anyway. So just take your pencil and start moving it. Don't start tapping, don't start clicking the end of it, just keep writing and it'll help you move. But let's say that the teacher isn't talking and you're supposed to be quiet. Let's say that you're in the middle of a test. But let's say that you just finished your test early and you want to take your pencil and you want to start tapping. I can guarantee that within five taps your teacher is going to say, hey, cut it out. People are still taking their test. You know that's what they're going to do, but you want to tap anyway. Here are some things that you can do instead that should not get you in trouble. You can use some of the same things that I told you a second ago, like with the, all of them, you can keep them in your lap and you can like rub them so that you can get rid of some of the prickliness with the stress ball. You can keep it on your lap and you can roll it around on your lap so that your hands are moving but it's not making any noise. One thing that works really well for me is keeping a hair tie or a rubber band or a string in my pocket or around my wrist. A lot of my videos you'll see me have a hair tie around my wrist even if my hair is pulled back because I use this to manipulate when I'm sitting still. Even as an adult I have a really hard time sitting still and when I'm in meetings or if I'm out with my friends and I'm supposed to be sitting still and not making a lot of movement and not being or acting silly, I need something to keep my hands moving. So I keep a hair tie on it and I will like wrap it around or just twist it around. But the problem is you have to control yourself. If you have a rubber band, I know you are really going to want to take it and pull it back and shoot it at your friend. You need to resist that urge. With all of these, there are going to be temptations to do things silly with them. You need to not do that. Resist the urge. Otherwise, you'll have it taken away from you and then you'll be back to where you started where you're left with tapping your pencil and feeling all the prickliness in your hands and your feet. We talked about our hands, so now we're gonna move from our our fingers to our toes. I have a really hard time keeping my feet still, especially when I have both of my feet on the ground. You have to have one foot off the ground. You understand where I'm coming from? No? Maybe? So what should you do when you get that really prickly feeling in your feet that won't go away and is going to drive you crazy unless you start tapping or doing something? Something that I use at home, and this won't help at school so much, is I keep a, uh, a dumbbell and I will keep that on the ground and I will roll my feet back and forth on that. It keeps my feet moving and it doesn't make very much noise. Another thing that I use is a rolling pin or a water bottle. The problem is your parents might not want you to bring their rolling pin to school or might not want you to put your feet on their rolling pin and roll it back 
back and forth. Your teachers won't appreciate a water bottle because it makes that really loud crunchy noise. Something that you can use that rolls really easily is a pool noodle. If you take a pool noodle and cut about this much off of it, it can fit both of your feet on it and you can set it on the ground and you can roll your feet back and forth without making a lot of noise, without drawing attention to yourself and keeping your teacher very happy. Let's say that you have a cement floor and the pool noodle is going to make noise. There's an easy solution for that. Just take a piece of cloth and either hot glue it around it or staple it around it or if your parents want to sew it or if you can sew, you can sew it around it so that you can have something that keeps the pool noodle quiet. Something else you can use are bouncy balls. If you have two bouncy balls or one bouncy ball and you can't keep both of your feet on the ground like me, set one of those bouncy balls underneath the arch of your foot and just roll that foot around and it'll keep your feet moving and it won't make a lot of noise once again, you have to be careful. You can't take that bouncy ball and throw it around the room because it will be taken away from you and your feet will be hurting again. Let's move on to the seat. This one is the hardest one to get rid of quietly and the hardest one to not draw attention to yourself. So you need to take a lot of responsibility. At the start of the year, you need to go up to your teacher or your parent needs to go up to your teacher and explain to them that you have a really hard time sitting still. Something that I allow for my students is to stand in a designated area in the back of the room when they can't sit still anymore or if they're even just really tired and need to sleep they can go back there and stand and pay attention to the lecture and they have to stay there quietly if you aren't responsible your teacher is going to take away that privilege from you and you aren't going to be able to stand anymore okay so I only really had one idea which was to have that designated spot in the back of the classroom for the problem with the seat and I'm sorry I wish that there were more things I can't think of any right now but if you do leave them in the comments below I know school can be difficult even when you don't need to move around a bunch I really 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 do understand but I hope some of these ideas will make the start of your school year and the duration of your school year just a little bit better. And remember, it's not how still you sit that makes you a good or a bad student. It's what you do with what you have or with what you're given. And until next time, I will see you when I see you.